Okay, now we're uh, very happy to have Zemo Sun from Columbia University, and he's going to tell us about quantum disinter entropy. Okay, thank you, Tarek, for inviting me. I'm happy to talk about this. This work is based on the following three papers. The first one is a big, big paper in collaboration with Dean Aninos, Frederick Deneuve, and Ebb Law. Okay, let me start from a brief motivation. Quantum gravity is a very important problem in our view. And it's solved partially by the famous ADSF conjecture in anti space spacetime. However, ADS is, the, is, not, is, the, is the universe in our mind and not the universe we live in. According to the current cosmological observation, our universe is asymptotically the theta. So it's, it's necessary to find a UV complete microscopic model of quantum gravity in the theta. There are many attempts to solve these questions, for example, string theory, the cytography, high spin DSCFT, but they all fail to provide a concrete model, including Hilbert space or an operator algebra, or even more ambitiously, the theta entropy. So, so we maybe we should at this stage we should ask a less ambitious question. How can we constrain the microscopic model of quantum gravity in the theta by only using the low energy micros microscopic data? Yeah, in this sense, we only need the low energy theory, like the linearized gravity coupled to some matter field. Because the theta has a compact special slice, so we don't have much much choice for many choice for this for this quantity to use because we cannot, for example, we cannot use S matrix. Here, so in this paper, we we compute quantum corrected entropy in the theta as a Euclidean path integral. At the tree level, it should give you the Bekenstein Hawking entropy and the, the loop and the, the loop corrections will impose a non-trivial constraint on the possible microscopic model. Here is an example given by Ashok Sen in Shoshu's background. He computes the one loop entropy of pure gravity in Shoshu background. And the first term A over 4G is the biggest hook entropy. And the, the second term is some log. This small a is, give, is the size of the horizon. And this term is one part of the loop corrections. And, and it, it, it's not affected by local count terms because we know that count terms can be expressed as curvature invariant. So it, it can not take the log form. And, and the second, second equation is the prediction of loop quantum gravity for the entropy. And you can see the inconsistency between these two coefficients. So in this sense, I should uh, claim that he can exclude the quantum loop quantum gravity. Yeah. Now let's go back to the state of space time. And this, this slide is about the very basic geometry. This is a Penrose diagram of the theta each constant time slice is a sphere. And the, the region de denoted by S is the so-called the sudden static patch with, with the metric given by equation three. It shows a horizon at R equals one, which is the, the region here. If you, we, if you weak rotate the time, T to minus I tau and the tau identify tau with tau plus two pi, you get a sphere. So the weak rotation of the theta is a compact manifold. Okay. So what, what we do is we compute the passing Euclidean pass integral on sphere for dynamical gravity coupled to arbitrary matters. Yeah. And the log of this passing log of the partition function gives you the, the theta entropy. At the loop, after the tree, tree level denoted by S0, we get A over 4G. And the S1 is the one loop correction for the entropy. And the D, 
d1 is the one loop path integral. Here, equation three gives you the the final result for this and for the one loop correction of entropy. I will explain every terms in this formula, and I guess it, it will take up all the time I have. The first term we will call the first term we will call it a group value term, and in the second term, this one is UV is UV uh, divergent because we some suppress some UV regularization here. So if we put it back, we need uh, we need the contents to to absorb the divergence. And also this one this formula works for bosonic field. For fermionic field, you need a minor modification for for this factor, but it's very simple. So let's focus on the bosonic case. Okay. Let's start from the bulk character. We found that the bulk character chi bulk is the same as the, the famous Harry Chandra character. So we, 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 know, we all know that the character for a compact group and the Harry Chandra character can be viewed as a generalization to non-compact group. So it's, it can, so it's like, it's also in this, this form, for example, let R be an unitary reduced representation, G be an element in this non-compact group and it's defined as a trace of RG. But since it's a non-packed, it's, it's the group is non-packed, uh, non-compact, and the Hilbert has the Hilbert space is in infinite dimensional. So you, you need to make sense of this trace. Actually, it, this this chi RG is a distribution. It only makes sense when you integrate it if it over some some or you smear over some completely supported functions. For example, you can let f be a fun compact spotty function on the group manifold and integrate it, and then you take the trace. Okay, and in our case, the theta isometric group, the d, d, d plus one dimensional, the theta isometric group is SO1 comma D plus one with the generators LAB subject to the following computation relation. In our convention, LAB are anti-emission anti operators for unit representations. And uh, SO1 comma D plus one is related to the conformal algebra of Euclidean space RD in this way. In, in, this way. in particular, we, we define for an unitary reduced representation R, we define the Harry Chandra character in this case as the trace of Q to D Notice that D is a, in this case, D is a boost operator. So we, you can conjugate it by, conjugate QD by some rotations, which will send D to minus D. And since the trace is invariant on the conjugation, so this Hefner character is invariant when you send Q to Q inverse. So it suffices to consider Q between zero and one. And also I want to, emphasize the difference between the, the theta case and the ADS case. In ADS case, this D is an is a Hamiltonian operator representing the Hamiltonian. So it's bounded from below, it's positive definite, and you have a discrete uh, spectrum, just it's just sum over the state that this states. But here D is an anti Hamiltonian operator because it's a boost. So, so this this so D has has no pod, no real eigenvalues. Okay, now let me give some examples of these Hamiltonian characters. For example, the this one the first equation gives you the Hamiltonian character of a massive scalar field in d plus one dimensional the theta. And the, this this scalar field is in, in the so-called principal or comp and the, or complementary series, and delta bar is the shadow dimension. You can see here there is a delta to delta bar symmetry. And the, the second equation gives you the, the a massless sorry it's a massless spin s 
gauge field in the theta four. In this case, the the the, the theta four case is kind of degeneracy degenerate because in this case the, the discrete series and exceptional series are equivalent. And see that the first term this this one gives is the dimension of a spin a spin s representation of SO3. And the second one is the spin s minus one representation. So the first term is the gauge field and the second term is the ghost field. So we need to sub subtract the ghost field contribution. And in higher dimensions, it's given by this form of the, the equation three, uh, 13, where this DDS is the dimension of spin s represent SOD dimension of spin s representation. And so similarly for DDS minus one. And the, the last term is the SOD plus two character of spin S minus one representation. Okay. And and the, what's the physics underlying the what's the underlying physics of this kind of Harishandra characters? We found that Harishandra characters count quadrinomial modes. More explicitly let phi be a Free field, it can be massless or massive on scalar or high spin field or, or massive high massless high spin field in the theta. And let chi phi h hashandra be the hashandra character associated to this field phi. And then you can till expand it into a series of q. For example, in, in the first in, in equation 10, you can till expand the denominator. And then it becomes a series of Q. We write it in this, in this form, and we found that the omega give the quantum number of quantum number frequencies of this field, and the d omega is the degeneracy of quantum number modes of quantum number frequency omega. We I proved that this claim in this paper by constructing quantum number modes directly in embedded space formalism and do the counting. Yeah, let's spend a lot more time on the characters. For example, in equation, in this equation 13, you, you expand it in a series of Q, it's always, and when D is larger than four, it always starts from a Q square term, where this D, D, S, S is the dimension of, SOD dimension of a two row Young diagram with S boxes in each row. And this one, so this Young diagram has a symmetry of a curvature in D dimension. Now how to understand this universal behavior? So let, let's, okay, let's see that the phi be a massless spin S gauge field. Near the, near the path of the boundary here, when eta goes to zero, it corresponds to the path of the boundary here. The, uh, the asymptotic behaviors are minus eta D to D minus one times alpha and the min minus eta to two minus two S beta. If you, if you consider a gauge transformation of this phi, the gauge parameters will have two four offs minus beta to D and minus beta two to two, two S. So this beta will be influenced by this gauge transformation. So it's a, a boundary gauge field. And to make it and of scaling dimension to minus S and this one has, has yeah. And this one had scaling dimension D plus S minus two. So to make it a, to make it gauge invariant, we need to construct its wire tensor of beta, which involves S derivatives. So the wire tensor is denoted by the O has scaling dimension two minus S plus S, where this, uh, this S corresponds to the S derivative. So it has scaling dimension two and explains the this Q, this two here, the Q squared term, because we see that in this, in this, Mm -hmm. In this definition, the power of Q is actually an eigenvalue of delta. 
of 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 the scaling of d. So it's the scaling dimension. And also because it's a wild tensor, it takes this this symmetry, this SS symmetry. So so if you put this O here at the southern pole of the passive boundary, it can produce the it can produce quadrinormal modes of this phi in the southern static patch. So more, more explicitly in quantum field, in quantum field theory language, it's like for any bulk points, and you have O on the on the southern. This 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 thing represents a quantum normal mode in the bulk. Okay, and then there are this edge character chi edge. I'm chi edge exists for spinning field with spin larger than one. Here is a example. Let's consider a mass massive spin one field in the theta four with mass m equals square root one quarter plus new square. And we found the edge characters takes this form, takes, takes this form. Okay. If you compare it to the example here, you see that it corresponds to d equals one and the new equals one half plus i nu. So it's the same as a bulk character of a of the theta two of a scalar field. So it means that the, the edge character contributes as a scalar path integral on S2, which is the horizon of the theta four. So more generally, we think that these edge characters co correspond to edge modes living on the, the theta horizon. And these edge modes are very important. So for example, it, it gives you the locality if you exclude this term, you, you will have some non-vanishing log divergence in all the dimensional the theta space time, which cannot be absorbed into any local count terms. And in, also in ADS, we found that, for example, for type A high spin theory in ADS, the total ball character equals the total edge character. And it gives you zero free energy at one loop level, which is expected because the boundary due is a free theory. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to the group group volume part. I copied the formula here. Where and the S A is from zero to K. So G0 is the subgroup of the gravitational gauge transformation acting trivially on S D plus one. For pure gravity, it's it's just the SO, it's the isometric group SOD plus two of sphere generating by the Keeling vectors. And the GI can be a bunch of young mu theory. And this gamma zero and the gamma I are given by this formula where this A D minus one is the area of a D plus one, an area of the horizon of a D plus one, the theta space time. So it's so it's also the area of a d minus one sphere. And similarly for a d minus three. And here, because a d minus one over four g is the tree level entropy, so we can also write it in this form. And the volume g a here is the canonical volume of this the young mu group or the gravitational group that had the that with the metric children such that the standard generators of the group is normalized to one. And then how, how then can ask why we do we have this group volume factor? It's because like, for example, because on sphere, when you, when you take a gauge transfer, when you take a gauge transformation, for example, for pure gravity, it takes this form. This good transformation has zero has zero modes when this psi mu is a killing tensor, is a killing vector. And the killing vectors are normalizable on sphere, so you have to consider them. 
Okay, it's unlike in ADS where the killing vectors are non-normalizable. So in for pass integral on ADS, there is no such group volume factors. Okay. Because these are zero modes, you have to omit these modes in ghost fields. But and then but you cannot just get uh, drop any modes which will destroy the locality. So to compensate this locality, you have to include this group volume factor. Okay, now you have the group volume, but how do you define how do you define its volume or what measure you, you can use to define the volume? It has to be the, the, the volume has to be induced from the pass integral measure, which is different from the this can, canonical volume here. So if you when you compare the pass integral defined the volume and the canonical volume, you will get these gamma A factors here. Okay, now we have all the ingredients in our main results, which is uh, equation six. Now let's consider uh, some special examples. For example, uh, for example uh, it's pure gravity. Here we give the one loop and here we give the entropy of pure gravities in the theta three, the theta four, and the theta five, up to one loop corrections. Okay, the first the first term is the the Bekenstein Hawking entropy, of course. And here the this small l is the the theta radius, and this capital L is some some. some mm, arbitrary scale have you have to choose to make the log dimensionless. So when D is even or the, the theta split time is all dimensional, the quantum has only all the power of L because the quantum has to take it this form R to any power. And this one gives you L to D plus one, and this one gives L to minus two N. So it's always odd. Then the constant, this constant, constant terms of L, that's all the L independent term in this entropy will not be absorbed into the constant terms. But for, for D, there are, con there are constant terms, but we use the minimal subtraction here. So we, we still leave the constant terms here. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we use these formulas to, to constrain any possible microscopic model? I'll give an example. For example, if someone claimed that the 1D chiral boson is the microscopic model of the quantum gravity in the theta 3, then the microscopic entropy should be given by log the, and dn, where dn is the partition number of n. As a leading order, dn is given by e2 pi square root 2n over 3, which gives you, which gives the tree level entropy as naught equals pi square root 2n over 3. And if you include the subleading terms in the asymptotical expansion of dn, you get this equation 24. Then you compare with the bulk pass integral computation here. You see that the coefficient of log as not are different and the, remain, the remaining terms are all completely different. So you can exclude this model as a as quantum gravity in the C3. Yeah, so if in the future, if anyone gives propose some model, it has to match these, these numbers here, these coefficients here. Okay, and this work leaves more questions. For example, we attributed the edge contribution to the ent entropy to some putative edge modes, but we don't have a clear physical picture of these edge modes. And the second, in this group volume factor, if we consider higher spin if we consider higher spin theory or vasylev theory, then 
the group and then the gauge group G naught is generalized to the high spin gauge group, which is infinite dimensional and had, of course has infinite dimension and also has infinite volume. So how to make sense of this formula of, make sense of this formula in this case. And also we, for this one loop computation, we only need uh, three theories, but then you can think how can we generate this character picture to interacting series? Do this do exist there? Or, it, or, it can, or maybe when you, if you can see some localization theory, can it give you some new computation, uh, simple, simpler computation for the localization? Uh, and another interesting example is JT gravity in the theta two, you can weak rotate it to a two sphere and you can try to do the passenger growth because JT gravity is one loop exact. But as I can see that there are some additional subtleties associated to the scalar moduli space in JT grav in the JT gravity case. Okay, thank you. I think my time over. Thank you, Zemo. That was very nice. I want to thank you on behalf of everybody else. So now uh, we can open it up to questions. Are there any questions? Sorry. So can I ask about well, how much this is probe, uh, all these results probe interactions? Because say, if you talk about high spin gravities, then the proposal you probably have in mind was shown to be wrong five years ago, and there is no good replacement for it at the moment. So in a sense, uh, the theories may not even exist. There are also papers mm -hmm. claiming these theories don't exist. So you use only free spectrum, and uh, well, this tells maybe nothing about even the fact of, of existence of these theories. Uh, so you can yes, take any spectrum the, at this point, uh, whether it corresponds to the theory or not. Sorry, can I see you again? Sorry. What? See, sorry, see it again. Can I see you again? Because we only use the quadratic action for these high spin fields, right? Yes, yeah, so at this point, you can take any spectrum you like, whether it corresponds to theory or not. And then, well, you can <clears> get <throat> some result, but uh, you don't have any theory to back it up. Yeah, but, but you need the interaction when you figure out the group volume factor. You need the three point interaction, I think, uh -huh. yeah. No, you don't, because I mean, at least the higher spin algebra you're talking about, it acts on free spectrum. So again, you don't need any interactions. Uh, yeah, for the one loop, for the spectrum, you don't need it, but for the group volume, you, you need the uh, inter at least the, the three, uh, three point interactions. Because you see that you, ha you have this coupling there. Otherwise, because otherwise, for example, if, if you consider only Yamir theory, at free level, it's just a bunch of U1 gauge field, right? It's, it's not Yamir theory. So then you don't get this Yamir group for you, right? At the quadratic level, it's just a bunch of U1 Yamir field, U1 gauge field. Oh, well, you want me to agree? Yes, yes, this I agree with, but you also have a bunch of free fields. Yes, yeah. Yeah, for, for the for the, the character part you don't need interactions, right? Yeah, so our starting point is we can see the first we can see the, the quadratic actions and then for the group volume part you need to build up some interactions that's consistent with the gauge symmetry. Yeah. But we we don't assume if the full interacting theory exists, I think. Yeah, okay, so thanks. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I had a question about your uh, edge characters. Mm -hmm. So in your, in your uh, expressions, the edge characters seem to come in with a minus sign does that yes, mean this, yeah. 
Does that mean that they contribute negatively to the entropy? Right, right. Just as I said, in the ADS case, you need to you need the edge characters to cancel the ball characters to make the free total free energy zero. Yeah, each each bulk character and the edge character looks very different. But when you sum up the whole, for example, the type A has been spectrum, they are the same. And in the theta, yes, it, it means that it, it contributes as a negative entropy. So do you have like a more uh, physical interpretation of, of this uh, negative entropy contribution? Does it, does it mean that it, it eats degrees of freedom or? Yes, because, uh, I think that there are some current work that's related to the factorization of uh, the Hebrew space of complicated field for the southern static patch and the northern static patch. So. Because you have the because in the Gigi field case you have this delta a equals zero constraint or even it, it it also exists for the massive massive spin one field and to we connect the the degrees freedom on the boundary and near the boundary so I think it's somehow decrease the degrees of freedom. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, with that, then I'm going to stop the video or stop the recording.